Welcome back, and uh, my name is Nassim Ali. And next we will have uh, presentations about how do we build ecosystems that surpass the attractive, uh, attractiveness of GAFM-based solutions from the perspective of individuals as well as businesses. And with us today we have Henry Beery from Fearcraft and Leticia Amores from Empathy.io and we also have Astrid Camonera from Empathy.io and we also have Peter Beck from Empathy.io. Thank you for joining us and providing your expertise on how to disrupt GAFM e-commerce models and the stage is yours. I'm from Peacraft Assistance and I've been working with identity management for 15 years approximately but recently found out that we're doing it the wrong way if we want to achieve what we want to disrupt the, uh, the GAFAM business model. There are a lot of mixed feelings about uh, GAFAMs uh, in the audience like this people focus very much on the bad, but in, in general life people focus on the, on the good side, that's what customers want. They want trustworthiness, they want uh, relevant offers from a large uh, amount of vendors because people really want choice, uh, because choice is also empowerment to choose. Uh, and uh, they want also not just to be in a vacuum, they want to actually engage with others and find out what other people have for experiences, and uh, last but not least, they, they need a consistent user interface. And uh, businesses, they want access to potential customers, they want uh, to reach territorial, sorry, territorial uh, further than they have been able to before, and uh, they want uh, tools to help them uh, manage their, their planning in the uh, of the, of the things. But the bad thing is that uh, consumers are persistently surveilled and tracked using this business model that we have come up with, uh, Google and Amazon and others have come up with. The choices proposed by uh, them increasingly uh, reflect their own business interests. How can we get the highest margin from the sales rather than how can the consumer get the best choice for him? And uh, uh, furthermore, uh, depending on particular areas where uh, the GAFAMs have much of the business, it ends up being very high uh, uh, percentages they claim and fees from, from, comp from uh, com uh, companies using them. And the problem is, of course, that consumers see them as free services, but really they are not free, they are very expensive. So, uh, then on, on the other hand, I think, if we look at what can move us to a new model, it would basically be that uh, we should look for, for cost savings rather than privacy, or, and, uh, and we should use a consistent user interface, better uh, UX, instead of what we have today. I think that, that would be driving right the change, not, not maybe some of the things that motivate most people in, in the privacy organizations. So, uh, what, what has been blocking progress? And uh, we have the BLCS uh, matrix here we normally cling to. And uh, I think on all fronts of this, we can say that uh, it's actually uh, not very productive what we have been doing. Uh, businesses are complaining to our sources about the big fees and other things, but they are just saying we need to profile people even more to target our advertisements to not waste advertising money on, on uh, people who are not really potential buyers. So it works in, in a bad circle where, where even if people have good intentions, they, they are forced to feel forced to, to target people in even more. And legislators, they regulate symptoms, like if you regulate a car and say uh, it has too much exhaust, uh, then we put a, a clock in the exhaust system and hope that it works. But probably it only works that the car will not drive anymore. Uh, so, so you can 
saying that the good thing about this legislation then is that it, it makes it a farm business more poorer, probably for, for them, and it makes it more uh, easy to come in with completely alternative solutions. Uh, and then we have, uh, I think, uh, I, I regard myself originally as a tech person, uh, but uh, we see now uh, uh, much of the tech influence coming and looking also at repairing systems. Can we do something better in the the farm ecosystem of today, but really it works the other way around. Uh, so it, it, it blocks our mind for what is really needed. And we also have people working in societal uh, areas that are mainly writing big books about how awful it you know, all is, but not really pointing at better solutions. So I tried to make some, some slides uh, that illustrate the difference between uh, the real world as we have to the left, the physical world, and then the, uh, the internet world as it would look if it was a physical world. Uh, because it's difficult to say how does something look in, if it's virtual. And uh, in any city, you come to just as I came to, to Helsinki, uh, I imagined the, of easy, of the first thing I saw was all the shops in the, in the airport. When I went to the city, it was all the shops. I couldn't you know, find a place where you can't find a shop. And that's typically because that's a private partnership we have made in, in, the, uh, in the traditional history that if you register something, a property along a, along a domain or a street, then uh, you, you can actually public, uh, uh, publicly advertise in the street. You know, on the other hand, if you go to hps.fi or hps.com, you just get a plain white slate page. Nothing to see here. So it, it seems that the, on the online, the people who with the internet didn't have any notion for how do you find things that you don't know already. Uh, you can only find things that people know already that because the internet was made by researchers and military that exactly knew who they were going to communicate with in before. And uh, so uh, furthermore, you can say the address space is continuum for that. Uh, the, uh, you, you can walk down the street like a brow you browse all the office where at the internet we made the domain uh, name structure so there's not a linear way to go through the internet. Uh, people try to do that originally by creating something called web rings where one paper shop would link to the next paper shop would link to the next paper shop so people could further away. But it really didn't solve anything until uh, we had the farms coming up with the models where they would actually uh, register the internet and do it in a different way so we could search for what we are interested in. On the other hand, uh, now it was difficult for consumers now to find uh, to find uh, companies, but we also made it difficult the other way around. In the physical world, anybody can, uh, any company can fill it, you know, the, the mailbox of, company, of uh, consumers living in the neighborhood by just walking around linear through the streets and fill all the mailboxes. When we get the, uh, the internet, there's no similar way you can fill all our email addresses with, uh, with spam. You have to know the email address in advance. And it, it turned out all the fraudsters got it, uh, the email addresses first before the, the nice people. And our email boxes were also very small in terms of bandwidth, both in, in in receiving bandwidths and storing bandwidths. So it actually ended up so that we got a regulation in Europe about not having, not being allowed to send mail to people that you don't know already. So you can say by the nature of the internet, we did everything not to be able to connect consumers and, and, uh, and companies. Uh, Here we see to the left a, a marketplace, like it works in the real life. We have many uh, uh, people discussing and debating. It's a, it's a negotiation where supply and demand needs are exchanged. Where as you see the, how it has been developed with the web shops, it is now mainly so that uh, they function as printing machines uh, in the physical life, except that 
in, in a normal vending machine, you have a barrel to open, you go and put a coin in the vending machine and you get something out and you can walk away. You don't have to fill five pages or read five pages and sign and then you have read the terms and conditions and privacy policies because there is none. Uh, and so, so that's another thing. How can we create an internet where we don't have to accept policies and, uh, and privacy policies for each vendor we address rather than just walking around uh, between everyone? So, uh, what, what we really want to do, uh, the, 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 the end game, that is to create an open data space like you see on the left here, which is actually very close to the one that is, uh, is to the left, it's uh, 10 miles apart. Well, people uh, on the left side, they have, are entering the marketplace and you can see everybody who transacts with each other, you can see uh, uh, what happens if there is a popular uh, shop uh, around the, the, the mall and uh, normally you would walk around and, and see the offers that are being presented by the, by the merchants but also if you really are lacking some particular kind of fruit or thing you can shout out loud does anyone have tomatoes uh, and you will have somebody answer down the, the, the aisle so, so it's, a, it's a way where you can actually normally browse but you can also cast and sense if you need to. Uh, in the right side, we have the same on the digital side, where everything is just put into a, to a big data space, which is a closed data space, it's only for, for Google, and they can watch out in the world, and we can do uh, nothing but actually get uh, very scarce data out of it. But, uh, So, how do we address the core problem then? The GAFAMs have really provided the discoverability function we need so that we can discover each other. But historically, when they started that business, we didn't have good means for payment. So Google had to actually charge companies, and Amazon had to charge companies, rather than having to charge consumers for their services. So we've got this freemium model because of convenience. And, uh, and we reverse the roles. So rather than having, uh, in the physical world, we have all the businesses that really want to get to consumers, they want to be public, and we have consumers that want to have certain privacy, but we turn it completely around so that still we don't have the possibility to find companies unless we go into this ecosystem. And we find them by actually having the companies pay a large fee to get access to us. So you can say that the problem is this reverse role of what is really natural in the market. Rather, we would have to say that companies should be able to have publicity and a person should have privacy to the degree they want. So uh, consider the options. Uh, there are kind of three options. We can just continue and say we restrict the fund business models like we do with the regulations. Uh, we can hope that some nice people will make a nicer Google or a nicer Amazon that lives up to the original motto of don't be evil. Or uh, we could implement a new infrastructure that actually supports uh, this uh, new model where we reverse the roles so that we get the roles that we want. Uh, what do you think? A, B or C? Anyone? Yeah, I, I, I would say I would say my favorite is C, but, but I think probably have to go along with A also uh, because it will it will help because it, it will, will be a journey to, to to move from one to another. But what what, what is the key then to the fun uh, disruption? Uh, Consider you have a, a business model based on scarcity of data, then prices go up. Like you have a wall right now, there's scarcity of grain, so the prices go up, there's scarcity of oil, prices go up. How can you get the prices down? How can you disrupt the model based on high prices? On something? You float the market. The basic thing, if you, if you float the market with data, 
Nobody cares to buy data from Google or Amazon or anyone else or really use them because they have the data available for free or for, for the cost that they actually cost to provide them. So that's the first thing. But then how can you actually do this if you put all the information free? How can you put all the personal data free on the internet, not sharing it individually but sharing it broadly without losing your privacy? And then the third thing is, uh, how can you able, uh, uh, a scalable ecosystem so that it really scales? And uh, that, are, that are really the questions we need to discuss uh, to get on uh, with this. And uh, for the first thing, uh, that's what something we have worked on in, in Peercraft, that is to say, in the real world we have registries that really focus on uh, uh, registering businesses, registering cattle, registering everything, everything that is important for our society, cars and so on. But all of these things are just dumb uh, registers that they point to, to physical things, to the physical car, they point to the, to the physical uh, outlets of the company, but they don't point to the internet outlets. And fortunately, we are now seeing registers uh, being open and into URLs, and it really changes the world because that means we can, with open data and with URLs, we have, we have, uh, we have the ability to really find all the companies and find further on the services, find uh, where they have, uh, where they can disclose if they have further verified credentials that we can discover. So we have got some of this, and uh, I will get into it because it's. Uh, a separate presentation, but I will just go on and say with the Instructed Information Exchange and Google has actually worked tried hard on that and Amazon uh, we have gotten the uh, GS1 with the EA number so we can now compare products from different vendors uh, easily uh, so and a lot of uh, ontologies they have developed and uh, then we have uh, consumer uh, privacy how do we do that? that that means that we have to shift the way we do identity. Originally, identity was made so digitally, so we had one universal digital identity. It was then changed uh, some years ago, they, the public way of doing it, to say you have directed identities, you have one identity towards every relying party that you want to talk to as a consumer. But now we need to go a step further and say we have uh, actually one identity per intent we have in the marketplace. If I want to buy a pair of shoes, it goes with an identifier and everything that goes on, uh, except all the bits you receive on that and everything in the transaction goes onto that identifier. So I'm the only one as a person who can prove that I actually am the one who bought the stuff. So if I make a review, I can prove that it's me that made the review and so on. So, but nobody can combine the transactions on unless I give them a key to combining a number of transactions if I want to have a relationship with a certain vendor. Uh, so uh, that, that's, I think, is, is a cornerstone in the development of, of what we should think of when we say EID wallets and so on, that we should think about really having uh, what's called ephemeral identities or, or individual identities. And we should have a, a scalable ecosystem that means that we need some, the, 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 all the intelligence that now is with Google and Amazon, that has to be moved out to companies on one side so they can find out what customers to choose. And uh, we have to, to, to have also increase the attention span so that my operator and me can find out between a very large amount of offers which one to sort out so for my visual presentation so that I can choose at the end. And uh, so what, what we're trying to do now is to set up a project where we have uh, people working to, uh, to contribute with different items of this. So uh, we have been working with this distributed business discovery. There needs to be people working with verifiable credentials and reputation management, data presentation for businesses. Uh, so how, how do you actually uh, present your data to, to the data space for optimum uh, 
some sales, and we, we have a whole business that are actually working to to help uh, people work with, with Google and Amazon, so-called sales and sales management. And so, so that's a business already there. We just need a public channel instead of private channels for, for outlets of data. And then there will be transactional identities for consumers, which I mentioned. Uh, consumers must, uh, agents must uh, pre-select the, the matching options that, that, that you have among a large number. And we need, of course, logistics and finance handling and ecosystem governance in people also. So uh, I think that uh, if you're interested in, in one of these areas and to contribute, we would very much like to talk to you and it's open. So I, I didn't present any very deep, specific technical things because I want to keep it so open so for discussion. Thank you very much. passionate about uh, design and technology and that's why I'm working at Empathy. Empathy is a company with a huge concern regarding privacy and humanization of digital products. Um, we have uh, more than 60 clients that are part of our family and we have more than 200 colleagues working from different locations around the world. Uh, we <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, we are working in a team called Pioneers Team, and the name is a statement of intent. Uh, most of the team has uh, traveled here uh, to explore with you new opportunities and uh, to work together. They are here within us. <laughs> How are you doing, guys? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Over the last few months, people's interest in privacy has increased and everything is related with an obvious change. But um, although we have talked a lot about it, we think that now is the moment to add. And if we do it together, we can accelerate this change. Mm. Our vision maybe is more from a business perspective, but we need your collaboration to make this challenge a reality. We need you. <laughs> we want you uh, to have some help to make real our dream. To share our ideas, Astrid will explain a bit uh, our idea uh, from a technical perspective. What do you say, Astrid? Thank you. Um, I'm Astrid. I'm a backend developer in the Pioneers team. And so I'm going to explain to you a bit about how our project works called uh, my account. In the last few years, there has been a distrust, distrust between the user and their uh, online experience because they don't understand how the data is used, even if this data is used uh, ethically. Uh, this is because we believe that the treatment of data is explained in very technical, abstract terms. So uh, our project is a solution to this problem. We want to make the use of this data uh, very intuitive and easy to understand, uh, but how? By giving the right tools like data visualization and controls. Uh, this is done by using a search API that can group um, data by different attributes, like what's your most frequent product, your most expected. Um, this is what we call insights uh, from the insights. So recommendations can be Infer by products that you already bought or products that are in the same category that is your most frequent one. Um, but this is uh, but because we want this process to be transparent to the user, uh, we want the user to control it. Uh, these default preferences, the user can add or delete preferences that uh, affect their recommendations and they can just uh, delete all their preferences and not affect their not have any recommendations or add new uh, preferences that are not 
uh, based in, in Ica, like, um, uh, like preferring some colors over the others, or their suicides, or uh, etc. Now I'm gonna go a little bit over an overview of the architecture. This is um, how my account works. The user just uh, shops in an e-commerce store and um, uh, generates the data where they can see it in my account. Normally it's very obscure to the user, so they can see it in preferences, recommendations and insights. Um, they have complete control over it, so this is why we believe this is a great use case to integrate their operators and this is how we envision the architecture to the integration of these data operators to work. The user can shop in different stores and have this um, reflected in my account and then they can uh, integrate different data operators. Um, this we believe is a win-win situation because the user gets to see their data just as a person and not as a shopper of one store. Um, uh, the stores get to cater to the user as a person, which um, is beneficial to them. Um, it's a great user use case for data operators to me. And then let this kind of explain a little bit more about uh, the functionalities. Well, customers, we want to show you some quick uh, prototypes to understand better the functionalities that Astrid has previously explained. Although we have researched many options, the most relevant are my preference and my recommendations. Um, and the most experience, we will talk, talk later about uh, that. One of our goals is to increase users' freedom. With my preference, shoppers can decide what information they want to share to influence the experience. They can change past decisions and create new ones. They could have more information through data operators or not share any if they don't want personalization. It's a good thing about mm, taking the control of the product. The consequence of my preference is my recommendations. This functionality is a space uh, with the people can access to have some custom suggestions and discover new products. It's a kind of a tailor-made fit. Let's explain in more detail the animals experience uh, to understand uh, the value. Uh, let's do a fun exercise. Let's translate the digital environment to real life. Some days ago, I was a bit worried about uh, my outfit for the seven, so I decided to go to a new shop to buy some elegant clothes. And as soon as I crossed the door, someone started asking me lots of things. What's your name? What's your last name? What's your address? <laughs> you know, lots of, of things not really interesting for my experience. At the end, I couldn't buy any elegant product. And why are you doing this with digital products? It's something really crazy and absurd. Because at the end, I don't trust this brand. At the end, I didn't buy anything, and I can't recommend you this brand. So I think we have to, to change the way we understand digital products. It seems obvious, right? <laughs> We believe that with the collaboration of the data operators, <laughs> yes. we believe with the, the collaboration of data operators, we can replicate real experiences in the digital environment. Shoppers visit a, a shop, and instead of creating an account, login, they can synchronize with data operators where they have all the personal information. This way shoppers will have one of the data and they will enjoy a great experience. This connection between the shop and the data will be temporal and the shop will not share, will not store personal information because data operators will protect it. It's still obvious, right? <laughs> we still have another dream, another challenge and I think that it's even more significant. <laughs> yeah. 
we are looking for the interoperability. It may seem like an impossible dream, but uh, we think it's possible because uh, we are pioneers, we want to be <laughs> So let's use again our imagination. Um, imagine that uh, you can build your own marketplace and you are taking all the decisions. <laughs> <laughs> you are the, imagine the situation a super visit and you show and have to create a new account again, wasting time adding preference already added in other stores. So that's when data operators come to play. The super visit account has an option to synchronize and the previous data will enrich the experience. The past doesn't have uh, to define the new journey. That's why the shopper controls preference to have complete freedom over the product. Imagine your own marketplace sharing information between brands, but always with your control over the data. Thanks to data operators. Sounds very right? <laughs> this is how we manage the future. Now Peter will be more focused on our vision. <laughs> Hello. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Astrid. Thank you all for, for being here. Um, yeah, so these last few slides I will uh, talk a little bit more about uh, the business side of things. Uh, my name is Peter, by the way, for those who came in later, I'm one of the product owners at uh, Empathy, and my focus is on privacy. Um, before I start with my own slides, I want to share this, this quote that I found on the, my data site, which I think uh, is familiar to most of you. And it reads that the goal of an ethical, ethically sustainable, human-centered way of managing personal data would always be the most practical and also economic, economically profitable way for organizations to operate. And I want to start with this quote for two reasons. First of all, I think it really aligns with the values that we hold here at Entity. But also that we are a commercial company and in order to survive we have to create value and make a profit. And this quote to me shows that these two uh, can go hand in hand and in my opinion also should go hand in hand. So our presentation today is not just uh, to, show your, to show you our ideas on creating a more private web, but it's also a call to action because we need your help to build this, uh, this future. Um, we cannot do this alone and actually we tried, but uh, apart from the technical challenges we also found that building an end to end solution doesn't fit the, the vision. Uh, that we have. Uh, so this needs to be a collaborative effort so we can serve the interests of all the stakeholders. That means in this case both the shopper and the shop. So in these last few slides I, I want to share you our, uh, our ideas on how we want to approach this. First of all, we have to take this step by step. Um, to get stake stakeholders on board, we have to, uh, whatever we build has to make sense from a business point of view. Um, and for that, not only the business model itself has to be sound, but we also have to consider that many of these companies, especially the large corporations, have made huge investments over the years in their current systems. And of course, they're not willing to write this off um, from one day to the other. And that's why we are proposing a phased approach uh, in which we start by integrating our solutions in their current centralized way of working, and then step by step give more control to the individual. We also believe that Commerce uh, can act as a perfect step to get uh, individuals familiar and excited about using their own data. Because shopping online is, or at least should be, a joyful experience. And it's also something that people do uh, frequently. And furthermore, commerce itself has quite a simple business model. And it is to sell a product or a service. And for this model to work, there's no inherent need to monetize the personal data. Nor is it necessary for the shops to, to own or store this data themselves. So then, what about the individual? So in the last two days, we've heard many exciting talks about the future, about creating a more private uh, web. And I think it's very exciting to see what, what everybody is working on. And, and we really share this, this, this vision. Um, yet we also feel, and I, I think this came up in many of the, of the talks, that it's hard to get uh, traction. It's hard to get people uh, excited about, about this future. Partly as part of the that people don't understand the value of what's, what's in it for them. Uh, and why is that? Um, we believe that maybe um, the privacy, the, the, the focus has been too much on privacy.
privacy, too much control. Um, and that's indeed the, the, the topic of many of the, of the talks. Um, but maybe that focus isn't enough, because um, yeah, we have to be realistic as well. And if you look at the, the products and solutions that Big Tech has come up with in the years, it's hard to argue that these aren't great products to use. Of course, if you don't take into consideration that the, the social impact that some of these products have. Um, but that brings that adds another challenge uh, for us, I think, for all of us, is that we cannot just focus on privacy, we also have to focus on the experience. Um, and that's why we said that let's start, let's use let's yeah, use privacy and control as a starting point, and then try to imagine what's possible uh, and what, what experience are possible with this. And with this focus, we found that um, uh, starting with uh, experiences, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, with this focus, we found that enabling individuals to express themselves um, is, is maybe a logical starting point than, say, identification or account management. Because giving people more means to express themselves uh, in a way that they are in control will enable new ways of shopping that are more exciting, both for the shopper as well as for the shop. Um, yesterday I was in the stock and it, it started with a quote uh, that data doesn't need protection, it needs unleashing. Uh, and I, I think I partly agree with it. Uh, of course it needs protection, but that's, that shouldn't be the goal in itself. Then, as I said, this is something that we, we, we cannot do alone. Um, and that's why we want to work. You who want to work with the data operators to, to build this future that we have in mind. Uh, and we want to do this so we can enable our clients, the shops, to connect to individuals so they can create a personalized experience that's more human, uh, more controlled by the individual, and without the need for shops to, to own this data themselves. Now, currently, we're working on a proof of concept that, that opens up our search and discovery solutions to connect with uh, different data operators. Uh, and as that is demonstrated, we, we see two use cases on this with uh, shoppers that already have an engagement with the shop, but also for new shoppers. And we think that this last one is especially interesting for our clients because it allows them to create a personalized experience with first-time visitors. But yeah, for this we need uh, to work with, uh, with uh, data operators uh, that, can, yeah, that can act on behalf of the individual and you can act on behalf of the shop. And that brings me to the last uh, slide, and uh, this, yeah, basically a summary, uh, and that is that and maybe the logical starting point to get people excited is not to focus on uh, identity, but on preferences, and on allowing them to express themselves in a controlled and safe way. Then we cannot only compete on privacy, but we also have to compete on experience. And finally, this is a collaborative effort. Um, so before we go to the questions, um, I want to do another reflection. It was in one of the panel discussions yesterday. Is uh, the question was asked, "What would be the killer app to get people excited?" Um, don't worry, I'm not going to say that we have the killer app, but I do think that um, commerce as an industry might be the, the, the might have the killer use case to get people excited to. Around it. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Questions? Hello. Hello. Uh, I would love to use your service. I simply love the idea. But one feature that I am really missing is a hate list. I may like 100,000 brands, and I dislike 15 brands. I'd like to list those brands because, you know, the models don't fit a chubby middle-aged lady, or the company is not sustainable enough, or whatever reason. I'd like to list those and say, please, don't recommend these. Do you have this hate list feature? Um, yeah. Yeah, actually, we, we have this as part of the, the concept that Letty showed. Um, we didn't go into much detail in the presentation, but uh, I have my laptop so I can show you some of the ideas, but it's, it's ex actually exactly what you are mentioning. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Thanks for the question. More questions? Yes, thank you. Um, very good presentations, lots of things to digest. I started to think about commerce. I mean, the reason we use money because it, well, it, it is a religion. We all believe that money works. That's why it works, because we all believe it. Now you're sort of thinking about sort of presenting that in addition to the money exchanging hands, you would have this sort of your shopping persona. So I, as an individual, I need to, you know, trust, you know, or, or believe that there's an organization that can do that for me and the shopkeeper needs to also believe that that's authentic and that works. So, so just reminds me that what you're trying to, to create is sort of in addition to us relying on money exchanging hands, also, you know, coming up with this new church of shopper identity and, and uh, just a brief function, and yeah, that's. Um, I, I think we we the way we look at it is with the concepts that we have in mind. We want to enable a more um, yeah natural relation between a, a brand and, and and the individual. We want to give the individual the, the means to to show like who who they who they are, what they're interested, in, what they're not interested in. As, uh, I just uh, just mentioned because um, now um, when you go to uh, to a, a commerce site, you can of course search and, and navigate, and that's actually the, the product that we built. And in that session, we can do some recommendations, but we at least at Entity we don't use any personal information to, to do that. And we 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 see that there's a limitation, there's a limit to this, and we think this new way allows to to create this more natural. Yeah, way of communicating, a better way of expressing yourself as, a, as an individual. It is, yes. Okay, thanks. Um, a follow-up question, actually, just thinking that shop stuff had, had a vision sort of in my mind that your browser would sort of change color when you sort of adopt that shopping persona, and then I was starting to think that me personally, I might be shopping for myself, then as a parent, I might be shopping for my family, I might be, you know, doing the shopping for my underage child. I'm just thinking, like, could you have, probably have different personas that you can switch between those, have your sort of your night mode and day mode, so to speak, and things like that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think that's also one of the benefits to uh, separate the preferences, like what somebody likes, to uh, separate it from the identity of who, who somebody is. And then you can have multiple uh, you know, like identities or like personas that you do uh, to shopping for. And that one of them could be on behalf of somebody else, like your children or your mother, maybe. And I think that's also what we, what we say. That by giving people control and privacy, this opens up much more, much yeah, new, uh, new ways of shopping that are not possible. But, uh, no more questions. Okay, I think um, we can leave it here. Um, as I said, we we have, we have our stuff with us, so feel free if you want to see, see some more. Uh, of what we are working on, and of course, uh, we're looking for uh, partners. So, thanks again, thank you so much, and uh, enjoy the rest of the conference. Okay, thank you. And um, now we have a break of about one hour, uh, a lunch break, and then we'll be back on the Citrus stage at one o'clock. <laughs>